Hello, it's Sunday, let me service you. Welcome to Sunday Service Flower Pots. How are we all? Are we good? Are we okay? Are we struggling? Let me know in the comments. Also, give me a like, a love, and a share. Natalie White, hello there. Love to Thomas and Terry. Bronwyn Harrison, it's been your birthday. Happy birthday, darling, and much love to Peter. Dee McChrystal, hello there, I salute you. I salute all you nurses, NHS and key workers, Carly Cuckoo, Honky Fletcher, hello and thank you. Dom Lee Daly, he's been painting his betting chairs. I can't wait to visit Dom when all this is over. Sam Charles has been going out on his daily walks with the, with the, um, lots of motivation that I don't feel I've got at the moment. So hello everybody, how are we all? Lots of lovely flower pots are jumping on. If this is your first time to Sunday service and you're a new flower pot, let me tell you. What I do is I sit in the kitchen, I print off a load of bumps. I have no idea what I'm going to read until I read it. They're all Dear Auntie Nellies. Now, let me tell you, I am the nation's, I am the international last resort of an agony aunt because... Um, I don't flower things up and I don't wrap folk in fucking cotton wool. You come to me as last resort because some people have problems and they like to talk about them and they like to talk about them and they like to talk about them and they like to go on and on and on and on and on like a fucking Duracell bunny. When you come to me, you bring me a problem. Believe me, here a problem shared is a problem solved. We all solve it together. And like I said, I am the last resort because I'm brutally honest. So you know that when I say it, I don't want to fucking talk about it again. There will be strong language throughout, but hopefully no talk of a sexual nature this time. I've had a little bit of a go on my eyebrows this morning. As you can tell, the sister's not twins. So we've got a little bit of a pink glow going on. Um, hello there in Tasmania, Australia. And good morning to Helen Stubbs. It is 12 noon here in the United Kingdom. What a difference a day makes. What a difference. This time, 24 hours ago, I was sat in garden in my bikini. If you follow me on that there Instagram, Antonella Uncensored, um, you will see that um, I was uh, lounging around in my bikini. Somebody just said, I'm missing you on the new series of Customers Always Right. When we, when they offered me series two, I had to decline, unfortunately, because I was in panto. Oh no, but I wasn't your normal panto villain. Oh no, my social media followers are touching two million. So there we go, so I was the evil stepmother in Cinderella. I love the colour of your hair, says Dee McChrystal. Yes, it's, um, God knows what colour it is at the moment. And it got blown away because I went and put something in green bin. We have a green bin here in Rosendale for general waste. Brown bin is um, garden waste. Blue bin is plastic and shit. And grey bin is um, cardboard and paper and stuff. So where this will be going after. So yeah, it's lovely to see you all. Thanks for joining me. I didn't come on on Wednesday on night time with Nelly because I wasn't really fucking feeling it. And I thought, how can I go live at nine o'clock and source out a whole barrel of problems when I can't even fucking put my face straight? So without further ado, it's Sunday. Let me service you. It's Sunday service. Relax, rest up, put your feet up, make a brew. I've got a brew. Uh, what you having for your Sunday roast? Let me know in the comments. If there's any reviews you'd like me to see, pop them here in the comments because I do like a little sit down after and I go through them all. Uh, let me know what you're on with. Like I said, give me a like, give me a love, give me a share. Lots of new flower pots are jumping on lately. So, um, yeah, that's good, isn't it? So, lockdown got them like, what can I do? Watch me. Yeah. It, it's a bit better than watching paint dry. So, Melanie Anderson says, hello, I am in Saddleworth, hello, and good evening from South Australia, Nena Yurokovic. And can I just say, please, everybody, if you are having a Mother's Day today in that there, Canada, and lots of other places that it's Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day to you. 
Okie dokie, shall we get going? I never know what I'm going to read until I read it. And the answers are off the cuff, or otherwise it wouldn't be any fun, would it? Right, let's go. Dear Antonella, my best friend of 20 years is due to get married next year. And obviously has asked all family and friends to go along. She's asked me to be her chief bridesmaid, but there's one big problem. I can't afford to go. We're a family of four and we live pretty much week to week. Me and my partner both work full time, but don't have any spare money. The holiday would cost in around the region of £5,000 and I can't justify to pay this. I mean, we haven't even been able to go to afford... We haven't even been able to go on holiday anyway. I have already explained this to my best friend and I feel so awful, but I don't think she gets it. She still wants me to be her chief bridesmaid and I really would be upset if she picked someone else. Makes me so upset, but what can I do? Do you think I'm being unreasonable? I wouldn't mind, but all the wedding costs are getting paid for a credit card, which is putting her into a lot of a debt. And I don't like her partner either. Oh, it's getting juicy now, because I'm reading that thinking, fucking hell, I'm bored. Uh, she doesn't like her partner either. He's a drinker. Oh, and got her right where he wants her. It doesn't help with her, her and the kids, and this has become more apparent during lockdown, she's told me. Please help and give me your honest opinion as it makes me feel so bad about not being able to go. Do I stick to my guns for the sake of me and my family? Do we have a little holiday together or should I get into debt to go to her wedding? Ooh, I don't think the fact that he's a drinker and don't help her with kids is fuck all to do with any of this. It's fuck all to do with you. Your best friend's going to come to you and say, listen, um, he's doing A, B, C and D. That, I think a lot of us are doing things in this lockdown that we don't normally do. So whether he's a drinker or not, she's coming to you with your problem. You say to her, look, see how he is after we come out of lockdown. And if he's, unfortunately, this is his now behaviour and you can't cope with it, should you really be getting married? Should you really be putting yourself through a load of unnecessary heartache and debt for somebody who's a fucking pisshead? Because I fucking won't do it. Not at all. Not on your bastard, Nelly. Right. So, you can be there for your best friend as in she's coming to you with problems of her soon-to-be husband maybe having a drinking problem. That's her problem. Ultimately, though, it doesn't need to be your problem, does it? It's his problem. And if he's not willing to face his problems and his demons, why should you? Why should you carry the shit to some fucker else? Number two. You can wish your best friend all the luck in the world. You can have like a little hen party. You can have like a little pre-bridal shower. Whatever you want to call it. You don't have to put yourself in debt for no fucker. If she's choosing to get married abroad, that's her day. That's her wish. That's her dream. Send her with love and luck. You don't have to go. You just say to her, listen, sweetheart, I can't afford to do this. I want to come. Of course I want to come. But I can't, I can't do it. So when she comes back with wedding ring on and fucking jingle bells and all that shite and him pissed up in corner with a bottle of JD, have a little tea party at home for people who couldn't go because you'll not be on your own. But I would certainly not be putting myself in debt for no fucker. So you stick by your guns and you look after your little family. As for his drinking problem, that's her problem, not yours, okay? She might not mind having somebody who's a bit of a piss head. She might not mind it. She might just be blowing off, sounding off, or it might be the same problem in three years, but it's her problem. Okay, so don't let that worry you. Right, so uh, that's that. But can I just say, right, there were a girl on Facebook a couple of days ago, and she put on Facebook that her mum were getting married, and I thought, what? Can you? And they, they got the priest to come uh, from church into this, like, garden bit, and we got a Mr and Mrs light up sign and a bit of a cake and a few like cucumber butties. And she got married because her husband, well, her husband now is very poorly. So they had to get married, if you will. It was his wish. And I just thought, looking at the photos, I thought, it's not about fucking spending 100 grand or remortgaging your house or taking out every fucking credit card you can. It's about getting married. And their wedding pictures are absolutely beautiful because of the smiles on the faces. So please, 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 it's nice to have fucking doves and fireworks and confetti flying out your ass. But do you really need it? 
Do you really need it? Because at the end of the day, it's between you two. It's the commitment and the union between two people. And you get a piece of paper to prove it. So does it fucking matter? Do you know what I mean? Anyway, moving on. Hey Nelly, for Sunday service, please. All writings are anonymous, so don't worry, I'll never be reading your name out. Can you please give us some ideas on how to keep a relationship going during lockdown or work? My partner of three years lives 30 miles away. He's a farmer, so he's only free to talk late at night. I suggested FaceTiming, but he says there isn't much to talk about. We both got scared as we're going to fade apart. Any help would be great. Well, can he really be that scared that you're going to fade apart if he's not willing to put any effort in, such as FaceTime or, oh, Christ on the back. It's difficult for anybody in lockdown, whether you've got a long-distance relationship or you live three doors away. You're not allowed into each other's houses, are you? So, don't matter. But what I would say here is... We have nothing to talk about. Nobody has anything to fucking talk about because we're not fucking doing it, are we? When I'm speaking to my beloved, this is how it goes. Hey, sweetheart, you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. What you on for your tea? I don't even say anymore what you on we, what have you been up to? Because he probably says something like, oh, I've done this today, I've been there today, I've done that, and I've gone, oh, yeah, I've done this, I've done that. We don't have that what we've done anymore. We just have, are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. What are you on for your tea? And it might give me, like, uh, inspiration to have what he's having for his tea. Or it might not. But I've been sending little things through post, um, through Amazon delivery to him, just to cheer him up, because he lives alone and he's isolating alone. And he's sent little bits to me, so that's nice to know that you're thinking of each other. And we've had FaceTime and we've had phone calls and we've had stupid text messages, not sexting, because they're not that kind of couple. Um, but yeah, we've not done like phone sex or out, but if you're feeling like a bit frustrated and you want to get a bit <clears throat> intimate with your Duracells, then say do you want to do a bit of um, sexy phone time, you know, ring me up and ask me what I'm wearing. I mean, twice a week, once a week really, I get out my pyjamas. Um, I'll have like a shower and wash my hair, brush my teeth. Got back into a bit of brushing my teeth, which is quite nice. And uh, slap a bit of slap on. So maybe one night, maybe have a hot bath, you know, get yourself feeling a bit sexy, stick some lingerie on. Or do what I do and pretend. I don't pretend because we don't do it. But if he rang up now and said, what are you wearing? This is what I'm wearing today, right? I'm wearing a grey t-shirt and grey pants. Which you can go out in public with, but the lack of pyjamas, so um, it, it's just like my lounge suit. But say for me and said, what are you wearing? I'd be saying, oh, I'm wearing um, a white lace people bra and crotchless panties. I'm not, though, am I? I'm not. But because it's on phone, you can pretend, can't you? So if you want to get a bit sexy with your partners during this time, lie. Um, if you want to ask them what they're having for tea, do. Sometimes it inspires you to make what they're having because you might not have thought about it. But don't be worried. Everybody's in the same situation. Everybody that has a partner, they're in love, but they're not together. Um, your relationships are only going to collapse during lockdown if um, you don't put the effort in. But that would happen in real life. Relationships are really fucking hard work and they get on my bastard nerves. It's like a job. You've got to put the effort in. You really have to try every fucking single day. And I've been on my own since 1995. And um, it, it's difficult for me to remember that there's somebody else to think about because that remote control is mine and it still is mine and it still belongs to me. But it's about taking other people's feelings into account. It's about compromise. So if you're feeling like you need FaceTime, then tell him, say, look, I really want to see you. Can I FaceTime you? And if you want FaceTime me, can I have a picture? End of... So it's about still putting in the effort. Things are different for us all. One day you might be up, one day you might be down, but it's about working together. 
No, no, I'm not wearing a bra either. We're on low beam. We've been on low beam. Oh no, I weren't on low beam yesterday because I'm a bikini on, so I'm on mid beam. But I've been on low beam quite a lot. And then other day when I did put a fucking bra on, I thought I had a fucking straight jacket on. I can't fucking breathe. I'm like, oh, uh. So I thought, what are we doing then again in a fucking hurry, Boris? I'm telling you now, just fucking chill out. We're coming out of lockdown. To get used to wearing a fucking bra again. I'll tell you what else I have to do. It's all about these fucking masks being compulsory. I'm fucking looking forward to that because I need a fucking mask to stop fucking eating. And not just that, I'm going to need a chemical peel because of a fucking light from fridge. Fucking light from fridge is giving me fucking light damage. <sighs> Dear Auntie Nelly, I'm a female and I'm 23. And would like advice on how to get over the first love. Oh, Long story short, I love a long story short because I can't stand war and fucking peace. It was a long distance relationship and we lived in different countries and he was the one who broke me. Huh? He broke you? In what way? Oh, it's not Wednesday. He already had another girlfriend and that's what broke us up. But I just can't get him out of my head. It's been a year since we broke up and I still think about him every day. I've tried to drain myself in alcohol doesn't work there's no answer at the bottom of a glass studies work sport new people but it doesn't help please answer now give me an advice do you know it's right hard isn't it when we get that first puppy love and it's all new experiences and it's all new feelings and we meet this person and we think our life will never ever um, be able to live without them. It's like life like we've never known it. It's like our first day on earth. Life does fucking go on, I promise you. And you're only 23. Now, I'm not belittling your age or belittling your love, but you've not really been around block, have you? I mean, I've been around block and up and down a few fucking side streets, mate. And what you feel at 23, you won't feel at 46. You won't. There's a lot of unfinished business there. And that's why sometimes we can't let go. So it's about letting go of past loves. And it's about letting go of, where you say it's a long distance relationship. You've got a big, beautiful Disney film going on in your head that you're the star of. It's not like that in real life. It's not because you had long distance love. You didn't get all the shit that goes with it. You didn't get to um, have him snoring in bed at side here. You didn't get to have to pick up his fucking stinky socks or his skid mark underwear. It was very much in the honeymoon period of it. And then it ended because he had somebody else. So why, why, why would you think about somebody every day? Let that be your one. And my hair's absolutely atrocious today. Let that be your one waking thought when he went out with a fucking cheater. We've got to break this down to what it is. I can't give a fuck how fit he were, how big his cock were, and how much he made you feel good. He cheated on you. He were a cheater. So why waste any more breath or any more time on somebody who wanted his cake and fucking eat it? What you must do is learn to let go. Learn to let go. And please do not compare other people who are coming in your life to this one. So don't start being bitter and hating him and thinking everyone's going to cheat because they don't. But also, don't think that he's up on this fucking pedestal and no one's ever going to match to him. They will. You're 23. You're in lockdown. Do what I do. Download you porn and have a nice time. Anyway, moving on. I don't know. Make some no-bake lemon cheesecake. Make a carrot cake. Do a banana bread. Every fucker else is. But you're going to be absolutely fine. Dear Auntie Nelly, <coughs> I'm supposed to be getting married this August. <laughs> this August? <laughs> All right, Flower. I also like dreaming. But everything has been postponed. It sure has, Flower. I'm 28 and my future husband is 32. We are in love and we are so happy. But why do I feel a great sense of relief that my wedding has been postponed? I don't know if I have cold feet or if I'm actually thinking that we won't get married as soon as planned. Eh? Thankful thinking, thankful. I have had a lot of time to think lately, haven't we all? And I'm not 100% sure it's what I want to do. I don't want us to split up, but I don't want us to marry. Please help. Marie Catrell says, are you still with that bloke, Nelly? Which one, flower? Me fiancé. Yeah, I am, yeah. He hasn't quit me yet, not that I know of. Um, 
Right, so you're in lockdown, you're supposed to be getting married in August, everything's been postponed, and you're thinking, actually, I'm quite pleased about that, and actually, I don't really know if I really want to um, actually proceed with this. It's absolutely fine. We do get cold feet. We do feel a little bit like, what the fuck am I doing? Is this right? It's normal to have all those feelings. But the fact that you've got a great sense of relief, do you have to get married? Do you really have to get married? What is your reason for getting married? Because we can live together now. The devil won't come and get you. So you can live in what my mum calls the living sin. You can live in sin. What is the reason you're getting married? You have to think, what is the reason? Right, that's the reason. So you want to get married because, and then is that reason still the reason you'd want to get married? Because, so the reason I wanted to get married, I wanted to get married because they were nice and I were in love with him and I couldn't imagine my life without him. If then I think, oh, actually, I, he's all right, but I'm not that into him anymore, and yeah, I'd be all right if he died, then things have changed, and we no longer get married. If we're getting married, I really want to get married because I've seen a fucking wedding dress that I know I will look fucking wealthy in, and it'll be Instagram viral. That's not a reason to get married. So you need to really think about why you're getting married. Number one, write it down in block capitals. And then think, do I still feel that? When you all of a sudden think, oh, I'm not sure, or yeah, I'm just shitting myself a bit, or is it the universe saying I shouldn't be doing it? Then have a word with your partner. But I really would think that I'm pleased that you're not getting married in August, because I think it's dangerous. Uh, it's not time. And I think it gives you time to think about what you're actually fucking doing. Because sometimes we see a bit of a blingy ring, don't we? And we go, oh my God, yeah, I'm going to get married. I'm going to be a bride. And then you actually sit down, come back down to earth and think, what the fuck am I actually fucking doing here? So you can live in sin, you know. Have you? And I always say to folk, have you lived together first? Before you actually say I do, because you might be saying I fucking don't two week in. Um, have you lived together? It's important to live together to find out the habits because when you first wait, get where you love, don't you? And you're like, oh my God, look, he's snoring. That means the love of my life is breathing. Three months in, you're thinking, if he fucking takes another breath, I'm going to fucking stab his fucking face off. Slap him across the face. You go, ooh, what was that? And you go, I'm going to take pillow away. You know, live together first and make sure. Yeah, it's a reverse image. Uh, that's me, left hand, look, left. That's what tells me what's left when I'm driving. Left, right. Yeah, right. So, hmm, there you go. So, yeah. Mm. Dear Auntie Nelly, I've been with my boy for nearly three years. And I asked him to make a list of what he likes about me. Nowhere on the list did he say anything about how I look. So I asked him if he thought I was attractive. He's never, ever lied to me. And this one time I wanted him to, but he didn't. And he said, you are attractive to me, but you're not like the girls in the magazines. Nice. This hurt me so much. In fact, it hurt me so much that I've not spoken to him since. I wanted him to tell me I have pretty eyes or a beautiful face, but he didn't. And I now don't know if I can be with somebody who doesn't actually fancy me. He's made me feel so ugly and insecure and worthless. I told him he should go and find somebody he does fancy. And he said, I don't want to. I just want to be with you. But I think I should end it now before he, he does see a girl he fancies. And he'll just leave me anyway. Am I right? No, I don't think you're right, sweetheart. I think you've gone into what I call cove idiot mode. Cove idiot mode can happen to us at any time. And it's happened to me a few times. So you sat there, bored out your bastard mind, because you can't fucking scrub your skirting boards anymore, there'll be no wood left. And you've thought, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to really upset myself, because it's what we do, isn't it, girls, sometimes, when we're bored. We either look for an argument, try and cause an argument, or make the argument. So, I don't, you, you can't disagree with me, because I'm female and I know, okay? And she thought, I'm going to ask him to make a list about what he likes about me. Because you're feeling slightly shitty. Your roots have probably come through. Your fucking eyebrows are curling over. You've got a fucking tash and you don't know whether to change your name to fucking Raymond. There's all sorts 
what's going on with us at the moment. And we need our man to be extra nice to us and extra special to us. And we're feeling quite needy. So you've asked for this list because you want him to say, you're absolutely beautiful. You've got beautiful eyes, a lovely little turned up nose, lovely lips. Uh, your breath smells like roses. Um, I love the way you walk, the way you talk. You're wanting all this affirmation from another person where he's gone. Yeah, you're all right. I like how you make a cup of tea and you're kind and you're caring and you're generous. And yeah, and he hasn't said what you wanted him to say. But then what he did say was, yeah, yeah, you're all right. I mean, you're not like girls at magazines. And that's really fucking blown it for you. And you thought, well, I'm going to fucking fuck him off now because... What if he sees a girl out of a fucking magazine? I'm going to quit him before he quits me. Don't work like that. It does not work like that. Me and my fiancé go on holiday. We walk down the street. We actually venture out in public. And I would say that 90% of the time, there will be females in his eye line because he can see who are absolutely fucking beautifully stunning. And I will say, God, what a bonny girl. And he'll go, yeah, yeah, she's a bonny girl. Yeah, she's fitter. That does not make me feel insecure because I trust him. And I know he's got eyes in his head. So there's no wrong with a bit of fucking window shopping. Now you comparing yourself to girls in magazines that's what he thinks is beautiful. He's gone, oh, yeah, yeah, the beauty. Yeah, she's in the magazine. He's probably not even bothered about the girls in the magazines. It's just something he said because he's been a cove idiot. And we've all done it and we're all doing it and we've yet to do. All right? So don't berate him for this. Think about the things on your list that he said that are nice about you. It's not about looks aesthetically. It's not, I mean, don't get me wrong. It will attract you at first place. You think, oh, he's a bit of all right. Then you get to meet him and the fucking knobhead bell and wank splats and you quit them. And then you meet people who you think you're not really attracted to him aesthetically, but you think, God, what a lovely lad. And the more you get to know him, the more you fall in love with him. And they're your kind of beautiful because it's beautiful to you. So please, 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 anybody, don't get wrapped up in looks. They disappear. They do, they disappear. Looks fade, but a good heart will last to the end of your life. So he's probably picked on the things that are lovely about you, but you wanted that neediness that we do need as females. We get dressed, we have our hair done, we have our makeup done, we put on fucking gowns, we come down, and we expect them to actually collapse in tears and they'll say, what do you think? He'll, yeah, you look nice. I don't want to look fucking nice. I want to look like the most beautiful girl that's ever graced the earth. We're always looking for something that's not there, which is usually arguments, okay? So give him a bit of fucking slack on this. He's done what you asked. I mean, if he said to me, make a list about what I like about you, I'd say, can I make one of what I don't fucking like? Because I'm not feeling very likey about you at the moment. So I think you sound lucky you got a list in first place. So don't quit him for that. It's unfair. Right. Dear Auntie Nelly, my daughter is making me feel useless. I am 58 and things are a little bit different now. She takes great pride in telling people I don't recycle properly and might sometimes only put a few items in washing machine. Is this my daughter? My daughter wrote in. <laughs> she tells me I'm not using electricity or water wisely. She's also said I'd never have grandchildren because my generation has fucked it up for them. She's so angry and blames me. I make excuses now not to go anywhere because all she does is show me up. What can I do and how can I apologise? Oh, that is well tight, isn't it? Can I just say, before I move on as well, I put a post on the other day of me and my knickers and bra. Uh, just because a lot of ladies have been writing in and saying they felt like shit. So I thought, do you know what? Do you know what? If you feel like shit, looking at your profile pictures, you're absolutely beautiful. I'm going to show you what I look like in my underwear, hoping that that would encourage people and inspire them to know that what we're doing is absolutely fine because it's not normal for anybody. And if all we come out of this with is a few fucking extra pounds or a stone and nine pound, guilty, 
um, then it's got a right in it because a lot of people are not coming out with a life, are they? But if we survive this with a few fucking extra pounds, we're doing all right. Hmm. So, your daughter says you're not recycling properly and she goes, oh, you're only putting two pairs of knickers in washer. She don't fucking know that one of them's got shit on them and one of them's got fucking perimenopause blood on them, so she needs to fucking mind her business. She needs to fuck off and sort out her own fucking recycling. I heard the other day that some fucking poor bastard were washing up with water from the washing up because they were recycling water to wash up with. No, I'm sorry. And I heard that there's people out there that wash up and don't rinse the plates and keep bubbles on it because it's a waste of water. No, again, I'm sorry. What you want to do in your own house, you fucking crack on flower. Do not feel like you've got to apologise at 58 because now all of a sudden we have blue beans, green beans, brown beans, purple beans. I don't fucking know which bin. I go to my fiancé's house, he lives in a different borough and I have to go, which bin is this? With that many fucking bins now, there's nothing wrong with only putting two pairs of knickers in washer. That's mine, it's still going. It is not your fault either that she is not going to have children because your generation fucked it up, whatever she means. Your daughter is very, very angry and that's my concern. As a mother, don't give a shit about if you put potato peel in it, fucking general waste, drink brain bin, don't give a shit. Your daughter's not well. She's got a lot going on and she's very angry with a young lady. So I'd be saying, come here, flower. Have a sit down with your mum. Come on. Mum wants to talk to you. I brought you in this world. If you don't fucking behave yourself, fucking take you out of it. Ha! <laughs> what I say to mine all the time um, and I just say look I, I don't know how to apologise to you but it really hurts me that I'm not doing things right because I try but it, I, I, I'm a bit long in tooth that you know you can't teach an old dog new tricks but I'm trying I'm trying my best but I want to know why I fucked it up for you to have kids you don't have to have kids don't put yourself any under fucking pressure I'm all right as I am. I don't need any bastard grandkids. Don't worry about me. But why are you so angry? Why are you so angry? And if you feel so strongly about recycling and, you know, all the carbon um, footprint, why don't you run for government, sweetheart? I think you'd get a lot of frustration out that way because you can't take it out of just me. I think you've got a problem with all my generations to do that. But you definitely need to sit her down and have a chat with her because she's angry. There's something going on. I don't know what the bigger picture is. She might not be able to have children and she might be using that as an excuse. But certainly keep your distance and just say, look, I'm having a good vibes only day. So look at me getting on down with kids. Good vibes only. Unless you're bringing your good vibes, there's the door. Fuck off through it. Dear Auntie Nelly, I lost my mum three years ago. She passed with cancer. I do apologise and I'm so sorry. On her deathbed, she made me promise that I would get married to my then boyfriend as she adored him and said it was a one dying wish. Why did they do that, people who were just about set last breath? It's well tight. He proposed there and then and she peacefully passed away. He's been so good to me and my mum knew that no, knew that he was a lovely lad and would look up. Would look after me. Three years on. We haven't set a date as I don't actually think I love him like that anymore. He's always been there for me and I had so much going on with mum's illness that I didn't really have time to think about it. I feel like if I don't say, I don't, if I do, I feel like if I do say I don't want to marry him, I'm betraying my mum's dying wish. But I also think life is for living and we are different people three years on. It would just end in divorce. What do I do? You know what? Your mum... I'm a mum and I have a mum. Your mum will think that you being with this fella who's right good to see her, um, she's leaving you on God's green earth and she's going off through the gates of heaven. So Sheila wanted that peace that you're going to be all right. She's going to be all right, it's my little girl, because he's a good one. She wouldn't want to be sat on a cloud up there playing a fucking art thinking, yeah, he's all right, he's a good one, but she don't love him. You want the best for your kids. So it might have been your mum's dying wish, promise me you'll get married. And at the time, you know, yeah, I will because, you know, that's fine and this is how I feel now. People change. And I think your mum would be very, very upset thinking she'd impose something on you that's going to bring you unhappiness. So 
you have to really, really not ignore what mum's ever said because your mum's voice will be forever in a day in your head. But you've got to make peace for yourself that your mum would have wanted what's best for you. I'm not a psychic. I'm not giving you a psychic reading. I'm just talking to you as a mum. As a mum. And as a mum, there's been boyfriends in Olivia's life where I thought, oh, I bloody hope she marries this one. But it's not gone right. And they've not got married and she's still not married. She's 25 in October, she's still not married. But she's happy. And all you ever want for your kids is happiness. So your mum, it's not, you're not betraying mum. You're not betraying mum. You're doing what's right for you. And that was right at the time, but it's not now. So I would certainly, we're all sort of questioning our relationships in lockdown, thinking, is it worth it? Am I missing washing his socks and his underwear? Am I missing his, his fucking bullshit or his snoring? Uh, we're all questioning things, but seriously, if you don't want to get married, guess what? You don't have to. You really don't. And for all you know, he might be feeling exactly the same. So communication here is key. Okay. Moving on. Dear Auntie Nelly, my kids and my husband really want a dog. I'm the only one who doesn't, so I am outnumbered. They promise they will walk it and feed it and I won't have to do anything. Ha <laughs> ha, that old chestnut. Thing is, they said about this about the goldfish and they soon lost interest. <laughs> I have said they are such big commitment and what if it rains, who will walk it then? My husband loves to have lions and the kids are so lazy. So I know it will just end up being my responsibility. It's causing a real atmosphere and making me really unhappy. I'm losing sleep over this. Is there any way I can get them to see why it's not a good idea? No. But what you can do, what you can do is set an alarm every morning for your children and your husband at 6am. Because no matter how late you go to bed at night, you still have to get up in the morning and let it out for shits and piss. Once you've let it out for a shit and a piss, comes in then and it wants its breakfast. Not long after its breakfast, it's looking at lead and it wants to go out. So why don't you, while we're all in lockdown, why don't you pretend you've got a dog? Why don't you say, right, we're going to pretend if we've got a dog and if you can stick to these rules, then I'll think about it. So set the alarm clock every morning for 6am, see who's up and see who's not and make a diary. Pretend you've got a dog, get a fucking stuffed toy, let it out, put the teddy out, bring it back in, feed it, put a little ball out with a few crisps or something, right, get it out, get your coats on, get dressed, get out. Believe me, if that is stuck to for two weeks, seriously think about it, but if it's not and it won't be, because nine times out of fucking ten it's not, then you've made your point. Also, go to one of the sanctuaries. We have Bleak Holt Sanctuary near me. You can go and take dogs for walks. But it's only a couple of hours that where you get to go out with them, take them for a bit of a walk. Um, have you got a dog in the household, in the, the family, that you can actually, you know, borrow and see what it's really like? Because when the novelty wears off, and I think that 6am alarm clock, the novelty will wear off. It will. Um, after three days, maybe four, I'll give it five tops. So that's what I would do. Well, my little gorgeous little Sunday services, it's Sunday, you've let me service you. That has been today's Sunday service and I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I am. My absolute apologies that I wasn't here on Wednesday for night time and early, but I was busy. I was busy taking deep breaths and trying to stop myself from crying every three minutes because things have just been really difficult, especially with perimenopause and, uh, and it were a full moon, which really should have told me everything. So I hope you've enjoyed today as much as I have. I'm going to read through all your comments now before we have a Sunday roast later and before we listen to the all important speech the announcement, the next phase by the gorgeous Bojo who brushes his hair with a balloon. And that's exactly what I've done today. So if 2020 is telling us anything up to now, it's telling us to enjoy every single moment we have and to never take anything for granted. Any day, anything or anyone. So, flower pots, 
God willing, I will be with you Wednesday night for night time with Nelly. And there will be lots of lovely reviews for you this week as well to get your teeth into. So I will see you all soon. Please keep writing to the page for a requ review request, Sunday service and night time with Nelly. And without further ado, I'll see you all soon. Have a blessed Sunday.